In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace the variable valve timing solenoids on this Ford F-250 with the 5.4 liter V8 engine. Let's get started. For this job, I recommend having some valve cover gaskets ready to go because we do have to remove the valve covers for this, so you might as well put on new gaskets. That way it seals up nice and tight when you're done. I'm only going to show you how to do this on one side of the engine because the other side is exactly the same. And as always, with this job, I recommend doing both sides at the same time. Let's get this intake tubing out of the way so we can get more access to the engine. Use an 8mm socket and loosen up this clamp. You can also use a flathead screwdriver if you want. This should now pop off. Take this hose and pull it out of its retainers, push it out of the way. On the engine side, there's another 8mm headed clamp. Loosen this up as well. With both loose, you can remove this piece and set it aside. Let's start unplugging wires and lines, hoses, everything, so we can get access to this valve cover. This line right here has a green tab on it. Press on that tab and lift it up. That should unhook it. Let's unplug the ignition coils as well as the fuel injectors so that we can move this harness around as needed without being limited by these connectors. All you have to do is squish on the tabs and pull the connectors off. Unplug the VVT solenoid as well. So let's come to the front of the valve cover here and unhook this retainer that holds this uh, ground wire in place. It just pushes into the valve cover and then right below it is this cam position sensor. I'm gonna unplug this as well so I can get more swing out of the harness. There we go. That moves quite a bit now. Next, use a 7 millimeter socket and remove the bolts that hold the ignition coils onto the valve cover. So we'll have to remove those so we can pull the valve cover up. A lot of times these boots will stick on there, so be careful not to tear them or rip them up. And now use an eight millimeter socket and remove all of the bolts that hold this valve cover on. We'll start from the outer bolts and work our way towards the inner ones. Just so you know, these bolts don't come out completely. They are being held in the valve cover. Sometimes they do fall off though. So if they do, take them out. If not, leave them in. There's a bolt here for the transmission dipstick tube. It should also be an eight millimeter, mine's a 10. Looks like somebody's replaced that already. All right, now you should be able to pull the valve cover right off. Now use a T25 Torx socket and remove this bolt that holds on the VVT solenoid. Of course, as you remove it, don't drop it in the engine, so either have a magnet or make sure you catch it. This particular one looks like it's uh, coming out with the solenoid, which that's fine. And uh, here it is. Inspect the area where it mounts. Everything looks fine. It's just a little bit dirty, so I'm going to slide the new VVT solenoid in with the bolt. If your bolt comes separate, I recommend placing it into the solenoid just so it can be held on as you drop it down in, that way you don't run the risk of dropping it right down here in the timing area. I'm going to start this on by hand and bottom it out as far as I can, just so I know that it's started on properly and not cross-threaded. And the torque for this little bolt is 89 inch-pounds. That's very low, so if you don't have a torque wrench that'll do that, just give it about an eighth of a turn after it bottoms out. A little snug by hand should be plenty tight. Okay, that's pretty much bottomed out right there. If you over tighten it, it is very easy to strip the threads in here since they're aluminum and this is a very small bolt. So at this point, let's continue with the gasket. And with the valve cover on the bench, uh, someone has put a ton of RTV on here. Not supposed to be there, so that's part of why I'm replacing this gasket, but I always recommend replacing these gaskets when you remove them because more than likely they are old and they will leak if you reinstall them. 
having said that, I'm gonna clean things up a little bit. I don't want much debris and, and oil in the groove that the new gasket's supposed to lay in. And we also have to replace the seal that covers up the VVT solenoid. And based on which side of the engine you're working on, whether it's the left or the right side cover, you either need this seal or this one. Should come with both. In our case, because I'm doing the right side of the engine, the passenger side, I'm gonna use this one. If you do on the driver's side, which like I said, you should do at the same time, you're gonna use this one. To get this seal out, you need a screwdriver or anything that'll pry it up and out and just simply pry it up and out. Wipe off the area with a clean rag with some brake parts cleaner on it, just so you can get all the debris off and degrease it. When you put the new seal on, you'll notice that it's got two tabs on it. One that's wider, one that's shorter. The shorter one goes on the smaller cutout and the long one or large one goes on the bigger cutout obviously. And so when you slide it on, make sure it's lined up. If you want to put a little bit of engine oil on it, go ahead, but it should slide on and bottom out completely very easily just by hand. If you take a little brake parts cleaner, you can run it along the channel here and clean it all up, degrease it. I've already done that and I've scraped away some of the RTV that wasn't even supposed to be here in the first place. When it comes to this, you have a 50-50 chance of getting the right one as you take it out of the package. And it looks like I got it right from the beginning. Now, what happens is they're both molded to their particular valve cover because they're not identical. So if you don't see it fitting, it's probably the wrong side. So just take the other one out. Now, one side of the gasket will have two ridges. If you flip it over, it'll have one. The single ridge goes into the valve cover. The double ridge side goes on the head. And you wanna make sure it goes that way, otherwise it won't fit right. As you line it up all around, make sure it actually fits in and stays in. At the front here, it'll have two areas that are wider. That's where we're gonna add some RTV on the head side because that's where the timing cover meets the head. These bolts also need new seals on them. The valve cover gasket kit should have come with a bunch of these for all of the bolts. The easiest way I found to take these off is just take a razor blade and carefully slice it in half right down the middle. Then you can split it open, pull it right off. Inspect this. This one's a little rusty, but it's not in too bad of shape and especially the threads and the head, they're okay. So what I'm gonna do now is take the new one. You can put a little bit of silicone paste or engine oil on it if you want, or you could just slide it over like this. There we go. And repeat this process to all of the other bolts. On the head surface, we're gonna have to clean everywhere. Now, the majority of this is actually fairly clean already, however, on the top and on the other side, on the bottom there where the timing cover meets the head, there should already be some RTV, which there is, but we have to scrape that off so we can apply new RTV. Make sure you scrape away from the engine so nothing can fall in. There we go. Get that surface to be nice and flat and just go around the rest of the surface. Ensure that there's no debris, ensure that there's no oil. Uh, which we will do after it gets scraped. And when you scrape it like this, I recommend a razor blade because it's light enough to not gouge the aluminum, but it's sharp enough to scrape anything else off. Now take some brake parts cleaner on a clean rag and degrease the whole surface. This also wipes it down to ensure that there is no leftover debris, sand or oils, anything like that. Just go around the entire area. At the top, put a little bit of oil resistant RTV. Right on that seam there, you don't need a lot. If you put too much, it'll go into the engine. That's not a good thing. You just want to cover that seam and do the same on the other side of the timing chain on the bottom. Now bring the valve cover in. Make sure you don't catch that gasket on anything to make it fall off the valve cover. Try to be gentle with the hose that's in the way here, this heater hose. And I'm gonna have my hand on the back of it to ensure 
that the gasket doesn't fall off. And you wanna also go slow so that you don't get any debris inside the engine. All right, it's uh, almost in position, but before I actually put it down, I'm gonna double check that gasket. All right, that seems fine. So, slide it over. In the front here, you'll have the VVT solenoid that will guide you into position. Give it a wiggle, get that RTV set in place. And that's it. Get your bolts, start them in. And I'm gonna start with a couple of them in the rear here, because like I said, in the front, this VVT solenoid will hold it. So if you just put a few bolts on in the back, that should hold that side. And at this point, just let go and start all the other bolts. There's also a bolt all the way back there. Just don't forget about that one. I'm gonna leave the dipstick tube disconnected for now just because I need more access, or I want more access in here, I should say. It's gonna make things a little bit easier. I'm gonna start in the center, just bottom these out, get them uh, snug, I'm not torquing them yet. The torque is 89 inch pounds, so it's very low, so when you snug them up, don't go too tight. That's all of them, let's torque them down. Once again, 89 inch pounds is the torque for these. Starting in the center, working towards the outer bolts. Oh, that one in the back I can't torque, but uh, I'm gonna just get at it with a ratchet and do my best to tighten it. Okay, those are all torqued. Get the dipstick tube back on here. Get that 10 millimeter headed bolt, thread it in. And once that's on, snug it up. That's tight. Move the harness out of the way and let's get the ignition coils back in. Now, because we had all of this apart, I prefer to blow some compressed air. If you have access to an air compressor, do the same thing. That way you get any potential debris out of the spark plug tubes. Take the ignition coil and a little bit of dielectric grease or silicone paste, put it on the edges of the boot here. I like to do that so that the boot doesn't stick to the spark plug in the future. It's a lot easier to remove. And once you've done that, slide it back down onto the spark plug. Of course, repeat the process four times. Might as well start the bolt in while I'm at it. Now snug these up. I'm gonna do these by hand just so I don't potentially crack them with the power tool. Once it's bottomed out, an eighth of a turn should be plenty tight. Lay the harness back in its spot, plug everything in, ignition coils and injectors, and make sure they click when you plug them in, that way you know it's locked in. Don't forget about the VVT solenoid over here. There we go. Bring this breather back over, clip that on. Make sure that's locked in. On the front here, clip on this ground wire if you unclipped it, and the cam position sensor, clip that on as well. Make sure that clicks, which it just did. So there we go, everything's back together. And once you've done the same thing on the other side, let's put the intake back on. Make sure that neither ends roll over as you try to position them. Get this snugged up. You know that it's plenty tight when you move this and the tubing doesn't pop off, so that's good. Do the same over here. 
It's very easy to over tighten these clamps and just because it can keep turning doesn't mean you need to keep tightening. Take this coolant hose and reposition it on its securing points. And there you have it, job is done. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.